Okay, so before we start talking about difference and differences itself, um, we need to briefly talk about an important principle of regression analysis that you may have missed in past stats classes because it's not often covered. Um, or if it is covered, you may have forgotten. Um, I didn't like learn this stuff until like my third year of taking stats classes, and then I was like, oh, this is important. So it, it is important, so pay attention because it, it's crucial for difference and difference analysis. Um, and it's this idea of interaction terms in regression models. So to introduce this again, um, if you remember this analogy that we talked about back in session two, um, when you can have two different types of variables in a regression model, you can have categorical variables that are categories. Um, that can either be binary categories that are like on and off, um, or it can be kind of a bigger category with like strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, strong or agree and strongly dis strongly agree, whatever. You have that five point scale that is also a categorical variable. Um, you can also have continuous variables, which which are just numbers, um, life expectancy, health, um, malaria risk, whatever, um, just actual numbers that have just continuous values throughout. And so it's helpful to think about the difference between these, especially when you're interpreting regression models. So let's say you had a regression model that's trying to predict happiness in a country based on its life expectancy. And this right here, which is an indicator variable indicating if the country is in Latin America or is not in Latin America. So it's a binary variable here. Um, this is actual real data from um, the World Bank. They have a, a happiness index, and they also provide life expectancy um, details, and they provide what continent or what region different countries are in. So we can actually measure this um, with real data here. Um, but looking at this, if we run the model, it's going to look something like this. We're going to predict happiness score. Or so happiness, happiness score is explained by life expectancy plus Latin America. So the way we interpret these two different coefficients is slightly different depending on what the coefficient or what the variable is. So in the case of life expectancy, this point one, the way you interpret it is you think about life expectancy as a switch or as a slider. So you're moving life expectancy from zero to more one more year to one and a half more years to two more years to three more years, etc. You can kind of slide this life expectancy slider up and down. So when you interpret the regression results, you say for every year of life expectancy, year increase of life expectancy, the happiness score in a country is associated with a 0.1 increase. Um, this happiness score is measured, I think, on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 is the happiest, 1 is the lowest. So that's kind of a, a good little bump in happiness every time a year goes up in life expectancy. So if life expectancy in a country goes up by 10 years, then happiness is going to go up by one point um, because it's this times 10. So that's how you interpret this coefficient because it's a slider. Latin America here is not a slider. It's a switch. So what this shows is that the average life expectancy in a country is 0.26 or 0.623 um, happiness points higher if you're in Latin America. So there's some baseline level of happiness around the world, but if you're in Latin America, that's when that switch is turned on, then happiness goes up by 0.6 points. Um, so that's how you interpret this. It's not saying as you increase Latin Americanness um, because you can't. It's just an on and off switch. So that's how you interpret these two. Um, these two coefficients here. So again, there's actual templates here. Um, you can say for every one year increase in life expectancy, happiness is associated with a beta one, which is this 0.102 increase. Um, and then you also have this right here where um, being in Latin America is associated with a beta two increase in happiness. Beta two here is that 0.623. So just by being in Latin America on average, they have those countries have higher life or higher happiness. Okay, so these are called indicator variables. Um, you may have learned them as dummy variables. Often you'll see them written as dummy variables. Um, there's a movement in the stats world to stop calling them dummy variables because um, dummy is kind of an ableist term. Um, so it's better to just think about them as indicator variables. Um, what they actually represent, if you think about graphs, um, they are a change in intercept for a specific group where it shifts the entire regression line up or down. So let me show you an example of this. Here's the happiness score um, for, a whole bunch, for all these countries in the world. Um, 
So you can see that life expectancy, when it's down low, happiness score is fairly low. As you go up to high life expectancy, you have um, higher happiness. So there is a good positive relationship there. Okay, so if we just figure out a regression using just like every country in the world, we don't put an indicator variable in for Latin America. This is just saying happiness score is explained by life expectancy. Um, this is the slope that we get. It's this 0 0.102. So for every year of life expectancy increase, um, there's a 0.1 increase in um, happiness. So if you put an indicator variable in for Latin America, this is what you get. That whole line gets shifted up by 0.62. Remember, that was the coefficient for our beta 2 coefficient. Um, so on average, that entire line goes up by 0.62. You can see here it's at 3, now it's at 3.62, and then it's just going up all the way. Um, and it has the same slope as the rest of the world. The slope did not change. Um, when you have an indicator variable, it just goes up or down. Um, that's all that's happening, which is fine. Um, but notice, um, here's these purple dots here. These, these are the Latin America dots. I would probably not draw this line through those dots like that. I would probably actually draw it more like this. Um, the line probably fits better that way. But if you just include an indicator variable, you're not going to get that. All the indicator variable does is give you a coefficient that shifts the slope up or shifts the intercept up. It doesn't do anything to the slope. So it's still the same world slope. It's just that in Latin America, it's a little bit higher. Other regions will be a little bit lower. Um, so that that's what's happening here. Um, so it's not necessarily the best way of looking more specifically at the effect of life expectancy on happiness in specific regions. It's good for kind of the world overall, and you can see that it's getting higher and lower in different regions, but that's all we can really see. Um, so let's look at it a different way now. If we run this kind of model, we still have life expectancy, we still have Latin America, but now we have this magical thing here, where we're taking life expectancy times Latin America. Um, so what this means mathematically is it's basically a new column in the data set that if you're in Latin America, it'll have whatever the life expectancy is. And if you're not in Latin America, it'll be zero. Because basically this Latin America variable is going to be one if it's Latin America, zero if it's not. So if you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. So you're only going to get this coefficient if, it's, if you are a country in Latin America, or you're only going to see that effect. So what this means is if you run this model like this, so here's happiness score is explained by life expectancy plus Latin America plus life expectancy times Latin America. This right here is called an interaction, or the interaction between life expectancy and Latin America. And it gets interpreted a little bit differently than a slider or a switch. So if we come back down to our regression results, here's our 0.12 or 0.102. That is our slider for life expectancy. That's still a continuous variable. So as life expectancy goes up a year, this is what happens to happiness. That makes sense still. But now these are a little bit different. We have two new coefficients here. We have our Latin America coefficient, which if we look at this initially, it now looks like Latin America is less happy than the rest of the world. Um, there's a decrease in average happiness by like 1.5 happiness points. That seems weird. And then we have this strange coefficient here, life expectancy times Latin America. Um, notice when you run it up here, it's this um, asterisk for times. When it shows up in the, in the regression results, it's this colon. That's just because R technically will use a colon. You can still run this. Um, instead of um, asterisk, you can put a colon. It'll do an interaction just fine that way too. Um, it's just two different ways of doing it. I like doing it with the asterisk because that seems more like timesing because um, you are timesing. Um, but internally, it's using a colon. So that, that's what the colon means here. So the way you interpret this is, if you remember here, this was our shift in intercept for Latin America. This, when you use an interaction term, is the shift in slope or the change in or the additional slope that you get. So what, what we can do is say in the rest in the whole world, the relationship between life expectancy and happiness is this point one. So for every additional point of happiness or 
life ex year of life expectancy, you get 0.1 points of happiness more. What this means is the Latin America effect, the slope for Latin America is 0 0.102 plus 0 0.022 or 0 0.03. So that means the slope in Latin America is actually a little bit steeper. For every one year of life expectancy that is added, happiness goes up by 0.13 instead of 0.1. Um, we can actually see it better here. So this is the template that you get um, when you use interaction terms. You'd say, in Latin America, for every one year increase in life expectancy, happiness is associated with a, and then you add the main global slope with the um, Latin America specific slope. So it's beta 1 plus beta 3 increase. So you have this 0 0.1 plus the 0 0.03, so it's a 0 0.13 um, unit increase in happiness score. The intercept is still technically 1.5 lower, but that's weird now. And you don't really need to interpret it anymore as being sadder on average, um, because this is mostly um, an artifact of just the math of drawing lines. And I'll show you that in just a minute so you can see where that negative, that big negative number is coming from. Okay, so interaction terms are changes in slopes for a specific group. So indicators just shift the intercept up and down. Interaction terms shift the slope up and down. Okay, so here is our plot of life expectancy for the world. Here's our blue line. That's the 0.1 slope um, with whatever the intercept is. And now notice the Latin America line is no longer just shifted up. It's tilted up and it fits better. Um, it matches these points a lot better than just kind of following the global line here. Um, and so the slope is this 0.13 right here, and it is different from the rest of the world's slope. It's not the same slope as the 0.10. Um, here you can kind of see the, the negative or the difference in the intercept here. If you kept drawing this line out all the way until it hit um, life expectancy of zero, that's where the, the y-intercept is going to be. And so it's going to be lower than the global one. Um, be, that's just the nature of like trying to get the line tilted is it has to start lower down on the y-intercept. And so that's why you have the negative 1.5. You don't really need to interpret that. You don't need to say on average Latin America is 1.5 points sadder than the rest of the world. Um, it is way down if everybody has a life expectancy of zero. But that's not the case. As you get up into more reasonable life expectancies here, um, you have kind of a better fit. And so down here in low life expectancy, the difference between Latin America and the world is relatively tiny. Up here in higher life expectancies, it's different. It's bigger. Okay, so that's an interaction term. It's a number in the regression model. If we go back to here, you add this to the slope. If it's just an indicator variable, you add that to the intercept, and that's going to move the line up and down. The slope is going to make it be uh, like steeper or shallower. And so that's what interaction terms do. Um, what would happen if you ran a model like this? Notice how it doesn't say life expectancy plus Latin America plus the interaction term. It just has the interaction term. Um, will it still work? Um, yep. So you'll still get the exact same results. Um, for interaction terms to work, you have to have the individual variables. So you have to have life expectancy on its own. You have to have Latin America on its own. And then you can have the interaction between them. Um, if you don't put them in and you just say life expectancy times Latin America, R will naturally like automatically stick them in for you if you forget them. Um, and it's not even a, a case of forgetting them. Some people don't like to put them in and just let R do it for them, um, which is fine. Um, I personally like to include everything explicitly um, instead of having R add a whole bunch of new terms for me. Um, but you do whatever you want. Um, let's say you have a model like this. Um, this is happiness score explained by life expectancy. And instead of our binary Latin America, yes or no variable, now we have a region variable. This has multiple categories. It has a category for um, Sub-Saharan Africa, Middle East and North Africa, North America, Europe, a whole bunch of other things. So if we include that as one of our indicator variables and we're interacting it with life expectancy, um, we get something like this. Look how long this table is now. It has our regular um, life expectancy right here, 0.11. It's a little bit different now because we're controlling for more things. Um, but now, these rows here 
are all indicator variables, um, which we don't really need to interpret because we're using the we're using interaction terms. And so really, these are going to be weird. It doesn't mean that Sub-Saharan Africa is six happiness points higher than the rest of the world on average. Um, that's just because way down when life expectancy is zero, it has to be at 6.3 for the slope to kind of end up in the world of the points. So you can kind of ignore these. Um, but then if we come down to here, these are the interaction terms for each of the regions with life expectancy. So these are the shifts in slope. So life expectancy, its baseline, um, or for the omitted case, which I think is East Asia, is 0.11. So all of these are shifts up or above and below 0.11. So in Europe and Central Asia, the relationship between life expectancy and happiness has a slope not of 0.11, but of 0.11 plus 0.04, so 0.15-ish. Um, if you come here to the Middle East and North Africa, they're 0.04 points higher, and so they're like 0.15 overall. Sub-Saharan Africa, that slope is basically flat. Um, for the whole for East Asia, it's 0.11, so it's going up like this. But if you're in Sub-Saharan Africa, the slope goes down by 0.1. So basically, that's your slope in Sub-Saharan Africa. And if we plotted it, we'd be able to see a whole bunch of different lines um, with different slopes. If we didn't use um, interaction terms, we would get a whole bunch of different lines, but they would all be parallel. Um, some would be higher than others, but everything would be the same slope. So the nice thing about using interaction terms here is we get completely different lines. Um, we basically get the changes in slopes and intercepts for every single region, which gives us a lot more detail about what's going on within each specific group instead of just world averages. So the general idea of these interaction terms is it's the additional change that happens when you combine two explanatory variables. So when we interact life expectancy and region, for instance, the interaction term is what happens when you what happens with life expectancy when you're in a specific region. Um, and so it's basically like two different switches turned on or one switch turned on and the slider going up and down. If we go back to the slider and switch analogy. Um, so what we just saw here is we found a life expectancy effect. That was the slope, um, the point one. We found a Latin America effect. So that's the switch of when you're in Latin America, on average, your happiness is 0.6 higher. Um, and then we found this, the additional life expectancy effect in Latin America, the combination of the two. This is the interaction effect here, when both things are enabled or both things are turned on. Um, this doesn't apply just to regression. So kind of to help with the intuition of this, um, look at this sign right here um, from some economist on Twitter here. Um, what happens here is the baseline price for a hot dog is $2. So what I want you to do is pause this video and see if you can figure out what the effect of the effect on the price is of getting cheese on your hot dog, what the effect of getting chili on your hot dog, and then find the interaction effect or the interaction term for cheese and chili. Um, so here are these prices. Um, you can go ahead and pause me if you want to see the answers. Um, if you're in the slides here, press the P button, and that'll show the presenter view. And in the notes for the slide, it has the answers. Um, so go ahead and pause and see if you can figure this out, and then we'll talk about it. And I'm assuming you paused it and came back. If not, um, maybe you figured it out already. Um, so if we look at the cheese effect, um, so a plain hot dog is $2. Getting cheese increases the price by 35 cents. So that's the cheese effect. If this was a regression, um, the coefficient for cheese would say 0.35. Um, because that's our, it's a switch, and so on average, the price is going to be 0.35 higher. The chili effect is also 0.35. If you get chili, it also raises the price by 0.3, by, by 35 cents. The chili times cheese effect right here is zero. There is no additional change in price that comes from combining the two. Um, this is as if like it's 35 cents for cheese, it's 35 cents for chili, add the two, that's 70 cents, and there's your chili cheese dog, 270. Okay, if the chili cheese dog was something like 250, the chili times cheese effect would be negative 20 cents, 
which means there would be a discount if both of these things are turned on at the same time. So what the interaction term is trying to find is the effect of com the extra effect of combining these two things. So cheese is one thing, chili is its own thing. Combine the two, um, what else happens beyond the combination? So it'd be 70 cents if you combine them. Um, the interaction term would be anything above or below that 70 cents. So if there's a discount or if they decided to make it $3 for a chili cheese dog, the interaction term would be 30 cents because it's going to be higher than just the combination of these two. Um, so again, if you press the P button here, you can see the presenter view and there's the answers. 35 cents, 35 cents, zero. Okay, so intuitively that's what's going on with interaction terms. It's the extra effect that happens when two things are combined. So again, we have we have just the life expectancy effect that's kind of like cheese. You have the Latin America effect, which is kind of like the chili. And then you have the additional life expectancy effect just for Latin America, and that's the chili times cheese effect. Um, and that's the addition that's the change on top of the slope for life expectancy only in Latin America. So that's the intuition behind interaction variables. Um, and this is important for diff and diff because when we calculate difference and difference um, estimates, we're using interaction terms for two specific variables. Um, for a group variable for like treatment and control and a time variable for before and after. And if we interact those two, then we get the difference and difference estimation. So let's go ahead and start talking about difference and difference more, more specifically.